We're looking at the IC2730E, a true dual band UHF VHF mobile and base station radio, and Chris from ICOM's here to tell us about it. So, uh, a true dual band mobile or base station That's radio. right, Bob. Yep, um, you can use it for either. Dual display, you can simultaneously receive on two frequencies, either VHF, UHF, or VHF, VHF, UHF, UHF. So, the output, it's 50 watt radio, um, it looks very much like any other standard mobile radio, but it has one really unique feature, doesn't it, that other radios don't? Uh, the Bluetooth. Yes, very useful facility. It's not fitted as standard, it's just a small option board, just slots inside, plugs in, and you can use any sort of headset with it, although there is an ICOM headset which also allows for remote control functions as well, which can be programmed on the menu. As it's a true dual-band VHF, UHF radio, uh, does it do cross-band repeater, for example? Yes, of course, yeah. Um, it's not enabled as standard, but your dealer can activate that for you. So good for Raynet or other emergency use. And what about scanning both bands simultaneously? Yes, you can set up a scan on, on both bands. What are the features of this radio, then, that really make it stand out, Chris? OK, novel feature is the, uh, the favourite channel, which I've never seen on a radio before, so you can... I don't know if you've ever tuned in VFO mode, but it can be quite difficult when you're, uh, when you're driving to find a particular frequency. Whereas you can highlight a particular frequency in the, uh, the menu. So as you're free tuning across the VFO with the VFO, it'll bleep at you so you know you're on the frequency you want. So. Really handy if maybe that was the frequency your local net's always right. on or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's quite a useful feature. You've got a comprehensive menu system where you can set up all your parameters um, it's sort of a layered menu system, so the, um, the items you might want to change regularly on the top layer and things that you might want to change occasionally or just when you first buy the radio, you can, uh, you can set up um, once and just leave it. And then the main functions of the radio, as you've already shown, you can access those easily from the knobs on the front, or you can access them from this really comprehensive remote mic. Exactly. You can do almost everything you can do on the front panel using the microphone. You can enter a frequency, just simply key it in. You've got some uh, function keys on there as well, which you can program to perform whatever function you want. Um, you've got all your up-down buttons. You've got your home button volume, squelch, everything can be adjusted on the mic. For mobile mounting, uh, mm -hmm. ICOM are unique, I think, in having their own proprietary mobile mount for these head units, which is pretty unusual. It is. Um, this is the, um, the base. It's very easy to attach and remove, and by buying a suitable adapter, you can mount the head onto the stand, and you've got ideal mobile installation. As well as using the microphone then and the front panel, uh, there are other ways we can control the radio too, aren't there? Yes, unusually for a mobile radio, this has got a CIV interface, which is ICOM's proprietary remote control. Um, with a suitable lead, you can just plug it into a USB socket on the PC, and um, you can write your own software to control it. Um, there's a list of commands available from the ICOM Japan website, and uh, it's ideal for specialist applications. I was just thinking, actually, it would be very good, for example, as it is a, a full... Uh, duplex UHF VHF radio, it would be great for FM satellite, so that would be an yeah. application because yeah. you could write a program to do the Doppler shift for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, just limited by people's imagination what they want to do with it. What about if you've got one fully set up and you've got all your memory channels in it and your friend gets one, how mm. easy is it to copy the info? Very across? easy, you've got two options, there's a cloning lead, so you can clone radio to radio, so you can just copy your contents into your friend's radio, or you um, can download a cloning program from, again, the Japanese website, and that allows you to uh, upload, download memories, change all your settings um, very easily. And again, you could change, um, you could exchange uh, frequencies um, with your friends on the internet. They could email you their file and you could put that in your radio. What connectors do we have on the back then, Chris? On the back, you've got the, the standard um, SO239 socket for the, uh, the aerial and uh, two 3.5 millimeter sockets for the main and the sub audio out. Uh, which also uh, double up as the, the clone and CIV sockets. We know it covers the VHF and UHF amateur bands, but you can listen outside those bands. You can. You? It's got extended receive coverage, covers the civil air band and the uh, marine band. 
Um, it's got um, some interesting features for the uh, the airband enthusiast. Which is very good because often it's just a by the by that you can hear the airband on it, but it's not an afterthought in the way it's implemented no. on this radio. No, no, it's got a couple of uh, very interesting features. If we go to the airband, it's got uh, 8.33 tuning steps. Um, not only that, the display will indicate the, um, the channel ID that's used by air traffic control. So you can dial up a 8.33 or a 25 kilohertz step frequency and it automatically adjusts the receiver bandwidth depending on what what channel it is so it's ideal for the airband enthusiast yeah because there's wideband and narrow am now that's right well, just so. to confuse things further and uh, also it will scan in the right steps as it well. will yeah so you can just leave it scanning the whole band and it would sort of adjust the uh, the bandwidth to suit the channel that uh, you were tuned to so Ideal. Now, in terms of mounting it, it mm. it's a mobile rig, so you could have it as it is there with the head attached, but that is not actually how it comes. No, as it comes, um, the, the head is separate uh, with a long separation cable, so you can mount it in the vehicle, um, but you have got the option of buying this um, adapter, which allows you to mount the, uh, the head on the front of the radio. It comes with a little short connection cable. So if you want to have it, as we've got it here, mounted on the front of the radio, you can yeah. do that. Now, it's a 50-watt radio, so in a mobile installation, it could get pretty warm. What, what have you got to deal with that? Uh, you've got quite a large fan on the back, which um, can be programmed into the, um, the menu to either run all the time um, or come on as, as required or when you transmit. So you've got quite a few options on the fan. Now, uh, I think most of us are aware of the... Uh, potholes in the British <laughs> roads and we know that a mobile radio needs to be pretty rugged to take yeah. those bumps and shakes. So this is really designed and built as a tough mobile. It is. It's a, it's a rugged radio. It's a single board construction inside the radio, uh, a sort of car chassis. It's really, really solid. I think it would take quite a lot of abuse. So to sum up then, we've got a really robust, really versatile mobile or base station radio. That's right. Offering a lot of listening possibilities, but yeah. also great for VHF and UHF. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. A nice radio. I like it.